differ from what we voted on during the budget cycle, the general system process. Um, Does this um, fall within the parameters we already pretty much set forward? Well, Mr. Chambers, you could decide a, um, a chunk of uh, money to administer general assistance. And uh, typically, you know, that money is there to, to do our share. Um, uh, what happens uh, is that we have a, an amount that comes back uh, be a revenue from the from the state to help reimburse us for that. It's not really a significant change. A lot of a lot of areas don't even see a change. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Any uh, discussion on this? Applications for renewal of automobile junkyard graveyard permits for AIM Recycling, LLC, doing business as AIM Recycling in London, 2244 Polo Road, and Marcel Dubois, DBA, Dubois Motors, touring in London. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think before you, you have um, both applications that have been filled out. Um, the necessary um, fees were paid. Uh, by uh, New Boys Motors on their application. Unless it came in today, EMI and Recycling has not returned their application, uh, returned their funding. Well, as I understand, because the company is in Canada, um, they, have, they have submitted the payment request and has not come in yet. So, but they fill out the application, they have the permit uh, application and the materials before you. Um, so, um, the, um, in addition to that, uh, you also have a note uh, from the code enforcement officer that, uh, that he signed off on both of these applications as being satisfactory at this time. Any else uh, from the public in regards to these two? Agenda. Agenda and the agenda. Agenda and the agenda. All right. I'll bring that up uh, after we open up regular meeting. Yeah. Uh, 
close this public hearing then. And call the regular meeting to order. Approval of this agenda. On the new business, I'd like to add, uh, see the Arundel General Assistance. And um, D, do void motors, seeing as we don't have anything from Maine, we can't approve them anyway, right? Um, we have the application. They just haven't paid the, the application fee. Okay. Because, um, again, like he was saying, it's from coming out of the main office in Canada. So they submitted the application, but the fee is coming in from Canada. And then I also have a planner's report. Yep. Yep. Anybody object to moving you boys further up the agenda? I have the only real public here. Can I ask one more, add one more thing? Um, I, I was on vacation last night. We didn't put, uh, oh, we do have payroll tables. I'm sorry, we do have that. We're all set. I missed that. Okay, Motion. Right. motion to approve it as ordered. Second. Mr. Main seconded. All those in favor? Uh, public forum. Any comments from the public on non agenda items? Here we go. Jack? Uh, I attended a day long meeting in Portland today. Uh, some of you may or may not have heard of uh, an announcement out of Sanford. Uh, they have just committed to implement a 32-mile long uh, high-speed internet uh, network that will be uh, a fourth ring on what is now Maine's three-ring binder network. And, uh, it's, it's a really big deal. Uh, it will connect Alfred uh, through Sanford and then uh, into Wells. Uh, and uh, they're spending a million and a half dollars on it, but they've raised themselves. Fundamentally, their, their premise was that uh, this is really an information highway that's being built around the nation, uh, much like the interstate highway system back in the 1950s. And uh, they, they felt they better do something or get left in the dust uh, economically. And uh, it's something that uh, I, th I think we should be taking a close look at also. I've been studying this for a year now. I spent a little bit of time with Keith. I spent time with Todd Shea back when he was town manager. I talked uh, briefly with the county manager and uh, I think we need to, to look at uh, seeing whether it makes sense to find a way to put high speed network into a rumble. That is at least a backbone. Uh, it won't be easy, but uh, you know, at worst it might take uh, deferral of road maintenance or part of road maintenance for a year or something like that. And or bonding. A variety of ways of doing it. But uh, food for thought for the future. Thank you. Jack. Did you were at that meeting. Where is it? Where are they tapping off? Of? Where is it coming from? I know they talked about Kennebunk and Wells, going through Kennebunk and Wells, but you know where? Well, yes. The, the three ring binder uh, is is a, a, a gigabit network that runs from Boston, from the rest of the country, really, through Boston, through New Hampshire, right up Route 1. 1,100 miles long, runs into Nova Scotia and undersea cable to Europe. Uh, there are hundreds of millions of dollars flowing through there, if you will, daily. Uh, and not a dollar drops off here. Uh, there are three rings that in Maine 
Uh, the first of which, believe it or not, goes right along 111 here, heads out to Lyman, and then heads north. Uh, and then there are two further rings. The purpose of those rings is to provide a very high level of redundancy. If, if you get a break on one end, the data simply gets rerouted in the other direction. And uh, so uh, Sanford is now tying in using a small portion of that uh, uh, fiber optic network and going to build a, 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 a fourth ring. Where did he tie in from? Well, it ties in, uh, in in Lyman. There's a little hut out there, the central office uh, hut where the equipment's located. It's secure, if you will. Uh, there's there's a location in Biddeford. There's one in Wells. Uh, I think there's one in Kennebunk too. And uh, and then there's the next one is down in in New York. There are approximately 28 or 30 in that vicinity locations like this throughout the uh, run up through Maine. And uh, they're, they're in close proximity. We, we, have, we already have this capability on two sides of it. Uh, so we could run right down Limerick Road and create a triangle and create very high speed network here in, in the Rumble. But uh, you know, it takes some, a lot of public support. You might, uh, I think that, excuse me, Jack. That's I, okay, I'm finished. I think if we start looking into that, there's also a new outfit that started up within the last year. It's offering high speed internet wirelessly. And I think they're concentrating initially on the high population areas like Portland, Bangalore. But if the thing does go and if it turns out to be feasible, you might be able to get the same kind of service without the expense of running wires. So I don't know much about it, but I have seen a couple of articles in the paper. And if we start looking at high speed internet service, which I agree with Jack, I think we do need to do. Uh, it might be to have a look at this wireless service as well. It would take a, a combination of the two, both the yeah. fiber optic cable and potentially wireless, to get that last mile of the home for the business. So, if, uh, if you're interested, uh, I can. can, can Continue to uh, pursue it. Uh, if not, I'll we'll probably pursue it anyhow. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thank Anything you. else in the public? No. Diane. Diane. Um, Diane Robbins. Um, I got an invitation to come to a public here. The problem is, is that the invitation doesn't give me any information. I mean, it gives me a little tidbit about what the hearing is about, not a public hearing, it's an appeals thing. It gives me a little stipend about what it's about, who it's about. But it gives me nothing else. So, as you all know, I usually try to go to these meetings. So I placed a call to try to get some information. Now, under normal circumstances, I can understand if somebody came in and just wanted a whole bunch of copies of records just for kicks and grins, that we would want to charge them. But if you're sending me kind of an invitation to an appeals meeting because I'm a butter, I should be able to get some information. But I couldn't get any information without paying for it. Now, my issue with that is I already pay for it. When I pay my taxes, I already pay for the girls to work at town hall, I already pay for the paper, I already pay for the photocopy. Now, I might have even been able to determine you know, what parts of it I really needed, and I, in the end, I would have been happy if I could have just gotten a copy of the permit and stipulations, but I couldn't even get that without them wanting to charge me for it. And to me, for somebody that's a taxpayer, that's fundamentally wrong. If somebody wants to come in and do something and they need stuff copied, that's one thing. But if you're sending me something about a public hearing or an appeals meeting and I'm an abutter, 
I should be able to get something. And if you don't want to print it, then post it with the agenda. You know, if we're supposed to go and make comment, how do you make comment when you can't even see it? Now, I could have gone into town hall, but I work 8 to 4.30. I can't go to town hall in the middle of my work day. Who's in charge of the appeals board? Or who sent you the... It was, it, was, it, was, it was a meeting tomorrow night. So it was a zoning board appeals? Mm -hmm. Did you try reaching out, email, see if you couldn't get some information email? I was told it was probably on disk, but they were told that they had to charge me a dollar a page, a 50 cents a page. Okay? It's on disk, you should be able to copy it, that should be fairly cheap. And like I said, I'm sorry, but I already paid for it. I mean, if, if I'm coming in and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to build something and I want you to give me a land use regulations and all that stuff, okay, I'm the one that's asking for that. But you're sending me a notice that someone is going up to an appeals thing, I'm going to butter. I should be able to know what's going on. Now I'm going to go to this meeting tomorrow and I'm not going to know everything that's going on. And that's wrong because, one, that doesn't help the board to make a decision because I can't give them all the information that they might need because I have no idea what they're going to be discussing. And to me, that's wrong. You know, you shouldn't be charging me for something I'm already paying for, for a meeting that you've told me that I'm on a butter and I have a vested interest in. That's something we can take up. Uh, we certainly can. Uh find out what our process and procedures have been, and if they, if they need to be modified or adjusted, that would be something that um, you folks can certainly do. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of information that we can provide. The Zoning Board of Adjustment has a hearing. People have been notified. Um, I, was, the, was the hearing notice just too vague for you to understand what was going on? Or, it told or what me what, it told me that it was, I can't even remember everything. It was it was like this long, okay. and I'm told that there's like 150 pages of stuff that goes with it. But I couldn't even get someone to send me a copy of the initial permit with the stipulations. <laughs> now I know what the initial permit was and the, most of the stipulations because I went to all of the meetings. But that doesn't help when I have to go to one of those meetings because. I don't know what they I don't know everything they're going to be discussing, and it was extremely vague. You know, if if you've got that much information and you don't want to photocopy it, then scan it and post it. If you can put your land use regulations on your website, then why can't you put the backup for one of those public for one of those hearings or appeals or whatever it is? If it's all supposed to be public information, correct? It's supposed to be public information, so there shouldn't be any problem with scanning it and putting it on the website with the notice or giving us a place to go in and be able to view it. At least I could go on the internet and at least go view it. I mean, I can understand photocopying costs and I can understand the cost of the girls in the town hall. I don't want to add any more work to them than they have to have already. But I also don't like getting a notice and feeling like I'm going to a meeting that I don't know quite what's going to be discussed and quite what the issue is. But that, that meeting is between the applicant and the ZBA, right? Somebody is, is questioning whether, you know, why the planning board made some action. Right. Well, that meeting is strictly between them and the ZBA. Well, I don't know. I got an invitation. Um, oh, I know that. I know that. But the ZBA meeting that I've been to in the past, I mean, the general public, they don't ask for comments from the general public. It's not a question of comments. You may have evidence to present one way or the other in support of um, the appeal or, or in opposition to the appeal. As an abutter, you yeah. should be able to present that evidence to the ZBA. Well, she isn't just a member of the general public coming to the meeting. Mm -hmm. She actually was, was notified of the meeting. And <coughs> Anybody go to the meeting and present evidence. Yeah. Um, but abutters get notice so that they have the opportunity to to attend. And I think they otherwise, should. if they don't, then they, they can't get heard later on. If anybody were to appeal to the superior court, and I think they should be able to 
go in and get even the, the basic information that they're looking for without either uh, having to pay for it in this case. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that if the whole thing is you know, 200 pages long, but at least they should be able to get some basic information. Well, you should be able to get the application for the ZBA application for the appeal. I mean, that's a one page, no, and two page was, document. That's all I, it is. I asked because the last planning board said that they were supposed to be, when they address this issue because I went back to see, try to see what the issue was. And one of the things they stated was that they would be sending out a copy of the permit or whatever it was with the, stip with the stipulations. And I couldn't even get a copy of that without paying for it. They also called it a public hearing. From on the invite that you got was called the public hearing? Is that what you mean? I don't, I didn't bring it with me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We got one, it's a public hearing. I, I apologize, I'm not familiar with the CBA and how it works, I don't. Well, it would, it would be with any board, it doesn't matter if it's the zoning board or the planning board or anybody else. As an abutter, if you're being told that something is happening, and that you may be impacted, or you may have something to say, or you may have a comment about something, if you've got this, okay, when you go, you can't make any constructive, you can't be part of a constructive discussion because you have no idea what's in that packet and what they're discussing. I think we have to look at this thing because, for instance, the, if in fact you were sent to notice that the planning board uh, was considering subdivision or Conditional use permit or something like that. The documentation there can be voluminous. And, no, and what I'm saying such, is, is, I would have been willing to have discussed what pieces I did or didn't need, but I was just told you had to pay 50 cents a page because there were so many pages, although I was also under the impression that it was on disk. So it probably could have been loaded to an email and sent to me. You know, we have great scanners these days. I know at work I scan hundreds of pages. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when you get to that point, you have to be able to have some type of access without having to go into town hall and do it there. That's not, that's not reasonable to expect that people that work every day can leave and go to town hall to go inspect documents. It's just not reasonable. That's been the practice for as long as I've been and, practicing. And, and you know something? And it may very well be. And it's be not good. I mean, I, I, I appreciate your comment. I mean, that's, that's right. In this, but, this day's world with the... You know, I, I tried to get the information, I got nothing, I have to go to a hearing, whatever it is, public hearing, zoning hearing, I, whatever it's called. Appeal. Right, whatever it is, I'm going to buzz. Not happy about any of it. But it makes it really hard for me to go to that meeting if I don't have it. I mean, I, I didn't, at this point, I'd be happy to see, I mean, what part of the application wasn't complete although I'm not surprised. And I'd like to see what the actual permit and stipulations are today. I mean, I know what they are. I was at the meetings. But there's nothing like having this in hand. Because if I had it scanned, I could put the pages that I felt that I needed to bring with me to make notes on it. And those of you who've dealt with me at some of these meetings, my notes are usually pretty I try to do my homework, but I can't do my homework if I can't get a hold of the books. If it's any help, if you have any voluminous documents like this, uh, if you could let me have a copy, I'd be glad to scan them in and put them on the website and send out a notice to anybody that signed up for email alerts where to access them on the website. That uh, might save this problem coming up in the future. Yeah, like the land use regulations. I mean, that's pretty easy, although I tried using the old link, and the old link doesn't work. Yeah, I know. We <laughs> it says it's not issues. available. Yeah. So you went to the, I went to the new one, and I clicked on. And that was great. Aside from the pages not being like correct when you printed them, but once you figured that out, that was easy. I just printed out the pages that I needed, but I was able to go through the whole document. Um, 
And I understand that there's a lot of documents, but you have to give us, you have to give us some information. And when I ask for at least part of it, like the permit and the stipulations, I couldn't even get that. I mean, that itself couldn't have been that big. But with the minute you could have gone to the planning board minutes when, when the application was denied, right? That's online, right? Right, and that said on it that a copy of the, his a copy of his permit with its original stipulations, I believe is what it read, would be sent to them. And I said, okay, if it's being sent to them, then at least I, as the abutter, ought to know what they're being sent if I'm going to be going to this. Yeah. Well, the, the issue you have, and I think you know, like the I talked about it, is that right now the policy says if you want a copy, it costs you 50 cents. We, we don't have a mechanism in place to provide it electronically at this point. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if other municipalities are doing that or not doing that, or providing it free via email or via uh, placing it on the, uh, on the internet. So the issue is, I think you have, you have an, a, an abutter who's been notified who prefers to get information because of the work schedule first to get it via email because um, she has a vested interest in what may be happening next door or uh, adjacent to her. So uh, I think there's a lot there to, to look at and discuss how you wish to proceed in the future to manage and handle those uh, requests uh, for information in those circumstances. And it's not that I prefer email. I would have taken anything at that point. I would have taken it any way I could get it. Paper, email, it wouldn't have mattered what it was. And at the end, I said, oh, I'd be happy if I could just get this. And I didn't even get that. So it's, you know, it's just really hard to, you can't be part of a process. And, you know, I'm sorry that I work 8 to 4.30, but that's my job. You know, and my next day off is Wednesday. So that's not going to do me any good. I think that if we don't have the ability to scan them and get them on the website, although it sounds as though we might be able to do that, then we need to be able to get those that information out, even if it means not charging them some copies, so that that person has their information. No matter who it is, they need to have that information if they're interested to go to the meeting. I'm just concerned about how far we go. Yes. Well, so I mean, some I'm of not these things can get, you know, with all the reports that are submitted with the yeah. planning board submission, it can get, and I don't know whether Diane's going down that, all the way down that road or not, but uh, you got to be careful. I mean, I can see so the application yeah. or, or something to that effect. Uh, so up to but, five pages with yeah. no charge. Yeah. You know, if, if someone's that interested. Yeah, at least for Diane's stage, yeah. maybe, you know, the findings of facts on yeah. On you know the denial of that application, that probably would have given her more information. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it would provided her what she needed, but at least that's a start. With with the actual application and the stipulations, because if you, you know, I was there at the meeting, but I didn't see the final application and stipulations when it was signed, and never got a copy of it. Even though I'm, a, I mean, I'm an above. You wouldn't have had any reason to send me a copy after I had been to the meeting. But now I'm going through a whole different level. So yes, what was on that application originally and what was permitted and what the stipulations were now along with what was missing what were the findings were would have been of great use going into this meeting but the only way i could have done anything was to come to the selectman's meeting and this is the first meeting you've had that i've been able to come to or the first meeting that i've since i got my invitation when is that meeting Right. Can you get any of that on, scanned onto the system so that she can get copies well, of that tomorrow? I can email it to you. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I think she said it was already scanned. I'm not sure. I think that's what she said. But. So at least the application and the stipulations. Same email address. We'd still be the same. I'll, I'll give it to you. Anything more uh, on this? 
approval of the minutes, September 14th. And September 16th. site plan pre-application for the RSU 21 MLD Day School expansion. Um, they just had, uh, they did a site walk. Um, they just discussed uh, some site distance issues. Um, apparently uh, those uh, site distance issues have been addressed. Um, they went over some parking stuff, making sure that everything was okay. There's no real concerns from the site walk. Um, they did state that uh, they made some minor um, adjustments from what was presented for the referendum, uh, just some minor tweaks here and there, and uh, they will be on the planning on the agenda for the following meeting. Uh, the next item was um, land use revisions. Uh, the planner presented a uh, package to the to the planning board. Uh, he's taken what the existing uh, planning uh, existing ordinances today and put it into a new format. A new format going forward. So the objective is to take the existing stuff, get approval from the town for its new format, not make any changes to it, maybe just some small, minor changes, but uh, nothing substantive, and go to a town meeting and get that approved. So that as they go and they, they start changing the zoning and whatever, they can add to this new format. Um, so he, he gave everything to the board, and he asked them that um, you know they looked at it. They, they would look at it. Um, there was some discussion about that on how to state the zone, the, uh, the zone boundaries. If you look at today's uh, ordinance, it goes into great detail. Now that they've changed some of these boundaries to property lines, this could get very, very lengthy. So uh, the comment, and this is based on, um, I guess, some law court somewhere, is um, that the description uh, will probably pretty much state as depicted on the map. So they'll, they'll show a map and that's where the boundaries will be rather than get into this long drawn out description. Um, that's that. Uh, other business. Uh, I thought we were going to have something on ours here, but they talked about uh, recommending to the selectmen to install a fire hydrant at the um, existing stub location at DMR Road. We had a long discussion about that. Uh, Norm Labby had provided a letter to the planning board stating that um, they had paid uh, for stubs every thousand feet and that the water company will, um, will pay to install the, the hydrants, but then the town will be billed almost you know, 900 and some odd dollars a year for each fire hydrant. So the planning board made a recommendation to send it over to us. Um, maybe we'll, I don't know if Tad had a chance to talk to you or not, but we'll probably see that at some upcoming meeting on um, maybe adding some fire hydrants going forward. They're looking at maybe putting in in the ordinance uh, when a new development comes along, if there isn't a fire hydrant, maybe the developer at that point can pay um, you know a year or two years worth of, of hydrant fees. Um, but you know they want to start putting these hydrants in where they're supposed to be. Uh, planner's report, uh, the Portland Press Herald is doing a story on the seasonal cottages. We should be seeing that at some point in time. They are still waiting condo docks, although um, they hear that they are getting pretty close uh, to getting all those condo docks. Um, it's a building going up on 111. It's a residential building. It's, there is already a residential building on 111. They want to convert to a business. It's still in the prelim stage. He hasn't given any more information on that. Motor land owners, uh, you remember the, uh, the motor land on Route 1? Uh, what used to be County 
I think it was County Connection or something like that, and it changed over to Motor Land. Uh, the folks that had County Connection still own the property, and they wanted to fight that. So there's some issues there with um, with parking lot. You know, the division goes right through a parking lot, and right where there's some lights already installed, new lights installed. So they're trying to um, work that issue out. Uh, Trolley Museum will be up for their addition for the next meeting. Um, we talked about, I uh, just made a mention that there will be a ZBA meeting Tuesday at 7 p.m. And then uh, Marty asked about what was going on at Kate's Butter. I guess they're doing some uh, extra landscaping there. And uh, the plan was going to follow up a little bit with that. And uh, the Gulf Mill Dam, the plug was pulled on that last Friday. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens over there. And they adjourned at 8.30 p.m. Dan, any other committee and board reports? And, uh, manager's report. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just to let you know, we're presently seeking a new uh, planning board secretary. Uh, the previous secretary submitted a resignation that I think was effective immediately. So we have um, advertisement out now seeking somebody. So I guess I'm putting my pitch in to the board members. If you know of anybody who, who's looking to um, to make a little extra money and would help us, we really really appreciate some names so we can begin to drill down. We have somebody that can uh, help serve uh, the planning board meeting next. <coughs> the other thing uh, that I have is that I received a letter uh, dated the uh, 17th of September from the Maine Department of Transportation which identified the, the new speed that was, that's being assessed on Limerick Road. Uh, as I understand now, the speed will be 35 miles an hour for the entire length of it. Uh, provided that information to um, the York County the Sheriff's Office uh, so they have it. Uh, provided it all to you, plus our department heads. And we're responsible for putting up the signs. I believe I've driven, I've driven the road several times, and I believe all the signs are up. Um, but if you see a, a, a sign that isn't 35, just let, let us know and we'll make the adjustment accordingly. And that's all I have for uh, Manager's report at this point. business. And review for town hall location. Yes, uh, you had asked to, to put this on as a uh, uh, item for discussion. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of history of the lots that we're looking at. As you know, we're looking at uh, a piece of property on uh, Camp Grant Road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we're Looking for a piece on there's a piece on Limerick Road that we're looking at as well, along with a piece at the corner of uh, uh, diagonally across from uh, around the market on Route One. I've spoken to uh, two of the property owners, uh, the gentleman who owns the rental piece uh, right across from around the market of of Route One. I've spoken to him. He's interested in carrying on dialogue with the town. Uh, if in fact uh, you wish to, I think our looming factor there would be that he is um, he is really uh, encouraged uh, to have uh, sewer there. And as you know, right now uh, sewer does not extend uh, up into Arundel uh, from from Penny Bump at this point. Uh, so that that may be a looming factor to that piece, um, but I'm not sure at this point. Did also hear from the, uh, the gentleman on uh, Limerick Road, and um, again, this was a piece that you looked at before. Uh, he provided uh, um, some thoughts, came in to see me, provided some thoughts about um, about what it um, about selling that uh, the the, um, the field uh, to the town. Um, trying to retain the back piece and, uh, and, and ensuring that there's a right of way through this so he can get to his back piece for uh, possibly future development. And as you all know, that uh, 
few of us um, visited the property on Camp Town Road, so Camp Ground Road. So um, we're trying to figure out what, they, you know, at this point I'm not quite sure where the board wants to go with the discussion, how you want to narrow it down. Um, if you want me to seek further uh, dialogue in terms of cost, um, what piece um, inspires you more than perhaps the others, um, how soon uh, you folks want to take some sort of definitive action to secure property. So they're all discussions uh, that we need to have. And, um, so uh, wherever you want to go with it. So I like the limit for the property, but I still think the price is too high. That was for all of them. No, that was per acre. Right? That was like, yes, yeah. there were four acres that were going to be conveyed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different. Yeah. Okay. Right. Generally, from what I gathered from the assessor today, um, a buildable lot in um, in Rundle can range anywhere between forty-five and eighty-five thousand, depending on conditions, the location, uh, soils, those kinds of things. So um, it may give you, uh, you know, something to gauge with, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know what the history was prior to this, so I'm, I'm not sure what kind of dialogue you had before. Um, but we would, we would put in a road. Yeah, I, um, my, my letter to, to the owner indicated that, but our discussion um, that wasn't a topic that uh, we discussed. Um, so I'm not quite sure where, you know, what he, what he thought about our proposal. I mean, I can't pay that and put in a rope. No. Oh, yeah, exa exactly. That's my, that's my point. No. That's my point. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned No, but it's a beautiful, no, it's it's be a beautiful lot. It would be hard to pay yeah. regardless. I personally think that um, on the Route 1 side of it is still, it's not, you don't need to be central anymore because people are using the internet and all this other stuff. Um, I think, if it, I, I, I favor the parcel over by, you know, the rental market for the simple reason that to me it's just going to draw more businesses. You know, you have, you, you come to the town hall, you do something, you're on your way back home, you're going to pick up something at a local store, you're going to stop, at, you know, come for the elections, it's too late to cook dinner, you're going to pick up things. I think it's only going to encourage more small businesses to grow right in that area. Um, I think it, it's nice to, you know, unless you're tying the town hall in with a piece of property, like for more ball fields or something, I really think it's, you know, it draws, you know, like maybe a postal plus place or, or things like that would kind of follow the fact of having a town hall in a more business location. It would be a nice gateway into town. Um, it doesn't have to be centrally located. Most Kennebunk town office is definitely not centrally located in the middle of Kennebunk. Lyman Town Hall isn't. A lot of places are not central. So I, it's not like a fire station that has to be central. So I, I think unless you're planning on doing, you know, a lot of other things on that property, I think, you know, but he won't talk to us unless there's sewer there. That's the problem. And there's no way that we, even if we want to put yeah, sewer, right. Kennebunk yeah, is not ready for it. They can't he, take it. That's what he says. He, he doesn't even want to discuss it or talk to us until, he might until we can put sewer on the property, get sewer down the property. He feels sewer is an important aspect to yeah. the development of that corner. Yeah. Well, I think that, that's, a, that's a great move. I mean, I think that's awesome. But but I think having the town hall located there would be a selling point to tell him that if we locate the town hall there, we, we probably will even attract more the fact of getting the store down one, little one, between the seasonal cottages and yeah. new businesses. And we can't, we can't make that promise that so was going to go yeah. up to there. No, I mean, but, no. There's no way we can make that promise. But if a town hall was there, to me, it would make the rest of his property that much more That's valuable. valuable. Um, I mean, if we were just bring somehow bring sewer up at that point. Then you'd be petitioning the town to, to get the sewer in when it's time. Does yeah, he need sewer because the the land wouldn't support septic system? 
I think uh, I think he wants to maximize the amount of lots he can get oh, on the yeah. lot. Yeah. 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 Medical, if he touches medical at all, it's going to need sewer. Any medical-based business. Yeah. So I think Why that's. Is that his I, he would he would like to encourage paraprofessionals or that kind of uh, oh, okay. um, the location as well. So I think there's a lot that we may not be privy to, but he did talk about sewer and that the, the need for it to be there. I mean, so from my perspective, you know, I'd like to see the three pieces of property. You know, what is the cost for each three pieces of property just to buy them out? And then at that point we could, you know, maybe have a session together and kind of brainstorm and say, hey, this is how much we think it would be, it would cost the development to do this, and then, you know, and then kind of lay it all out, and at that point we can make our decision on how we go forward. Right now, I mean, yeah, I like a piece of property. That doesn't mean that I'd be okay for the Route One, and, but you know, we got to look at it from a, you know, the bottom dollar going to be what's going to cost for the taxpayers and. Because at that point, if you're going to be building a road on the other property, you might as well build it on the one by where the town owns. I think it would come up to the same cost uh, and stuff. You know, but we would be spending that kind of money for land and building the road, too. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just it. You would be just building the road and, you know. But if you build the town hall, you're still going to get into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need a road wherever you go. So I'm not quite sure where you would like me to go at this point. How do you want me to? You want me to go back to them, tell them that we're are we still all interested in all three to possibly further discussions on all three? Um, do you want to narrow it down? Um, I I understand your concerns relative to the sewer one, uh, the the expense that would be incurred by the town for the for the internal road on the Limerick Road piece needs to be considered as part of the package in terms of cost. Um, and, you know, the, uh, the other piece is perfectly raw, raw property. And so, I need a little bit more land there. And so I'm not sure what you want to do. What's the wish? It's ready to start to go in there and start building. I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to look at wetlands. We don't have to look at filling. We don't have to look at anything except for the fact that we wouldn't be putting in the road. We'd just be looking at the cost of the property. On the road, you said. Yes. But the homeowner wants a road to the back. I thought you said that wasn't. Well, I think it's part of the. I think it's part of our discussion. Right. If we put the road in, there has to be some consideration on the lot cost. Right. If he wants to put the road in and he wants to continue with the cost, then that would be something you would have to discuss. Right. I mean, at that the price that he's saying per acre, if he wants to put in a road, right? But if he, you know, wants us to put in a road, to me, he's got to come down on that price. Campground Road? Any discussion on Campground Road? I like that property too. I think that's a good spot also. There's more work that needs to be done there. Yeah. Again, that's, you know, that's why I think that we should have, you know, all of our apples in a basket, or all of our facts, you know, maybe a spreadsheet that says, you know, this property, this is how much it is, this is how much this one is, this is how much this one is, and then we can kind of brainstorm, you know, Phil's really good at this stuff, he does this for a living, give us an estimation of construction costs or road costs or what have you, and we can get all that. And then, you know, here's a, here's a bottom dollar, and then at that point we can make that decision. Well, we have information on, we can't, we have information on the Limerick Road property from Sedego Technics already, and on the other Route 1 property at this point. I mean, I think if you want to consider campground, I think we, I hate spending the money, but, I mean, I think we'd have to find out what the professionals think about the feasibility of putting town hall on that site. And what are the constraints? And Phil pointed out a few of them that he says are yep. no big deal, or at least he can certainly handle it. Um, I mean, I think we ought to get some information from them about what they think about the 
Did, did they look at the, uh, yeah, they did look at the Limerick yep. Road property, yeah. right? Yep. They did. Yeah. They probably have a plan that would yep. take yeah. that property. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have anything for the Room 1 property, right? Yeah, they did. They did the, for the original Room 1 property. The original one. Right, that's yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. We had that one, yeah. that, yeah. and we had them do it, but we haven't. Yeah. I mean, I think if we're going to do those types of comparisons, we probably ought to get some information on the yeah. camera. Yeah. Yeah. Is it asking too much to just ask these guys to present the Board of Selectmen with a written proposal which includes plans of how the land is laid out? I think that would be our obligation, yeah. John. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the landowner wouldn't want to get into that expense. Right. Yeah. Just to show it to the board, mm -hmm. I would think. Even could we ask the landowners at least for a written proposal, at least including their best price, what they're willing to sell it at? I, you know, I think, I think yeah. we've asked that. We've got some of that information back, <laughs> and now it's in balls in our court, I think. Um, yeah. to respond. Um, I think and that's what Dan is saying. We need to well, if I could have just one other comment sure. uh, separate from that. I think Salome has some very good points about the desirability of property on Route 1. If it is the intent of the Board of Selectmen to encourage economic development in town, the center of that development should be along the Route 1 corridor. And something like the town hall in the middle of that area, I think would be a big help in generating other businesses in the same area. Uh, and I, in my opinion, that is something that ought to be really given some serious consideration. It sounds like both, actually. Limerick Road, if he wants to develop in the future, and Route 1, if he wants to develop in the future, maybe we can share the cost of Sebago to go in and you know, might be able to get that cost down. <coughs> well, Limerick Road, we already have it, but, right. but at least Route 1 might be worth talking with them. I just hate to I keep see. getting all these acquired properties and continually spend money on Sebago on every property. I hear you. I don't want to spend the money either. <laughs> yeah. Have we looked at other properties that might be like either in foreclosure or for sale, even if it has a house on it. I mean, I always question why we didn't buy the property across the street from Town Hall, because that sold for really cheap. It wasn't big enough, though. It wasn't big enough. Not enough acreage. We looked at that. It only had, what, an acre and a half? Is that why? Mm -hmm. yeah. We did look at that. And you want how much? Pardon? You wanted how much? At least three. Yeah, yeah I can't remember what they wanted. But that was before the yeah. pipes burst, I think. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, acreage wise, we were looking at parcels at least three acres. Right. Three acres. Yeah. Yeah. The parking and you know. well, we're open to anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're open to anything. Might, might negotiate with mm -hmm. because I don't see them lined up in front of the field with checkbooks in the hand. <laughs> Is there anything on 111? Oh, no. There's a nice field there, I know, but... <laughs> I know, I did it at one point. I did. Mm -hmm. The street like way up there, Yeah. We do have tax acquired property. Oh, you do always get in and out. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be worth talking to the Rule 1 guy. Again, in wonderful this, this is the Rule 1 piece, yeah. I mean, how big is it? So it's seven acres, right, or something? Seven or eight acres, then, yeah. That's but up to the seafood center and then all the way back to the you know, playhouse. And he, I, if I'm not mistaken, he had drawings already of a, like a business park. He had a rendering yeah. done. So he might have... But he has no planning board approval for anything. No. Yeah. 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 Um, he just has a conceptual plan. Just, and he's not willing to just part with the seven acres? We need to talk about that. I was going off the rendering. Yeah, I understand. The, the if we're part. talking, you know, three acres for a town hall, that leaves you know, three, maybe four acres. How much was he trying to get in? What was he trying to get in there?
I, mean, I think your point of uh, Dan putting together a spreadsheet of where we are, what topics we've talked about each piece may be helpful as we begin to process through that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put that together so at least you have that. Uh, I will reach back out to uh, the gentleman on, on the one piece and also the limit growth piece at this point. Not quite sure if you want me to do soil testing right now on the other piece. Okay. So hold right now on that. Okay. So um, suggested further discussion about this may have to be an executive session for us. Yeah. I mean we're you know, we start expressing our preferences for something or other that puts us in a weaker negotiating position. Correct. Can you give us a spreadsheet? Yes, I'll put together a, a spreadsheet and then provide it to you. Uh, moving on, new business. Sign the payroll. And then the motion is. So moved. Second. Second, all those in favor? Any man services. Yes, if, uh, if you recall, um, one of the things that we were trying to accomplish was to uh, to provide in, uh, individuals or a company that was willing to to do some hourly work for us, uh, uh, maintenance type on both the uh, town hall as well as the fire station. I put out an RFP, um, received five responses back. I provided a sheet, spreadsheet within your uh, packet of those uh, five uh, responses. Um, some took in the construction, plumbing, electrical, painting. Um, others um, were just painting. And then I think some were just uh, construction and mod remodeling modification. Um, out of the five, uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like to at least uh, enter into discussions with uh, John Getchell for some work, for some remodeling and some work for the for the town. Um, indicated a price of uh, thirty-five man uh, uh, per man hour uh, for the work. Uh, he's fully insured. Provided insurance to get to us. Um, and my conversation with some of these folks was that we would work. To provide them a list of things that we'd like to have done, have them worked out into their schedule, and then um, have them come by and, and take care of that stuff. We, we've got some painting, um, some siding needs to be replaced. Uh, we've got an abundance of those windows that the caulking is just absolutely falling off them. Now, if we're going to keep the windows and retain the town hall at this point, those, those windows need to be recocked and and so forth. So there, there is some work there, and I know at the, at the police station we have some trim work. Uh, we've got some exterior doors that are deteriorating that need to be replaced. Um, so those are my those are my thoughts at this point. Um, the reason I chose Mr. Ketchell, uh, not only was he um, a very competitive wage based on the proposals that we got, but he's also an Arundel businessman. And, um, to give him a, a, a shot at our business uh, initially before we look at others. I, I think all of them were very, very good based on the limited amount of uh, information I gave them. Um, so that would be where I'd like to go with it. Any discussion on that? You need a motion on that? Uh, I'm not just, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. Unless I saw, heard some strong objections, if there was something that I needed to know. Um, that's why I wanted to provide it to you. So if there's anything there, I'm sure you guys would let me know. So. And we have we have it in the budget for some work there anyway. So yes, there's there's about fourteen thousand between both buildings. So there's there's some flexibility there to get some of this work done. Uh, okay, bring back the general assistance. I make a motion that we approve the new GA guidelines. Second. Second. All those in favor? And 
Du Bois Motors. requesting uh, to be under Marcel Dubois, if I'm correct, rather than Dubois Motors. The last year, I know they changed it. Is that correct? I think it just stayed the same. Pardon? I don't think anything changed. Right, so it was, uh, I believe Cindy is the one that said she wanted under Marcel Dubois and not Dubois Motors. So yeah, it's not supposed to be doing much more. Yeah, it can be the same. She's the one that had the asked to have it off, so but we can add it on. So who's the applicant? I mean, who was the permit go to, Marcel? That's how we did it last year, and that's how the application came in as Marcel Dubois. So the renewal was for for Marcel. Okay. The application is all, all in, and the fees are in, yeah. and Cole just looked at it and approved it. Yeah. Yeah. After that, after seeing all of that, I make a motion and we approve it. I'll second that. Nate, certainly. No discussion? All those in favor? All in on. Yeah. We've we got this letter that was given to us. That's your policy. That's our policy. has held to in the past. Now my, my question is, on this, this property has multiple um, licenses for different, so does, does that still allow this to policy to hold? I mean, there's, there's, there are no, with, with the junkyard itself, with Dubois Motors, there are no violations whatsoever. Not that I know of. So I guess I'd have to look at the existing members of the board we run into this before that it's okay or because there are other issues on that property. I think we've renewed this for myself. Sure, the last time we it, there was no issues on that whole property at all. There are issues today with other businesses on that property. The other businesses aren't applying though. For the other businesses won't apply to that. I'm asking again. the question. You know, if you look at if you look at this 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 policy, it says property. It doesn't specifically state the business. Well, I'm not a lawyer. Just want to make sure that we get ourselves covered. Don't get ourselves in a ringer. if there are you know, violations of ordinances or whatever. Since I've been on this board, I don't recall anything coming to the board where there is any type of violation. So that's why I'm asking the question, you know, does this policy apply to this? Are we okay? I just want to make sure that we don't approve something that we are violating our own policy. I guess I've got to look to Elmer and, and Tom and... When, when Jim did his inspection, did he, did he do it to make sure that they complied with the... both of these applications comply with the, the, sta the state statute on the regulations have to be? I, I asked him, saying yes. Um, well, I, what I did, I'm not quite sure how he did his, um, his inspection or his process. I indicated to him that I needed to have no... You know, he, he has an obligation to sign off on those properties to ensure that, you know, uh, it comes before you, there's no violations. He's indicating to me by his sign off, there are no indicate there are no violations that he's concerned with at this point. Right, with two boys more. Okay. I mean, the way I read it, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's referring to the applicant. 
and a violation. And I, there's no pending violations with Marcel Lubo, correct? There is no pending violations with this, the business on this property. However, there are other pending violations on the property. And that's why, you know, this says for occupation of any property. I just want to, again, I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. I don't want to violate our own policy. If you guys feel that we're not violating, I'm 100% okay. Just questioning. Would Marcel Lugo's salvage yard come under a different heading than Du Bois Livestock and Composting Facility? Yeah, it's different. It's a, it's a different a license, a different application, a different application. Right. A different part of the property. Correct. Completely different part Correct. of the property altogether. Right. So, and there are no violations on the salvage yard. Correct. And if it's a different part of the property, I don't, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't know how the law is read either. Uh, Mr. Dubois, as I read this, is a lessee from Randrick. Is that how you say that? Trust? Randrick Trust? That's the property owner. Oh, it's the pro yeah, it owns the property. Okay. And Mr. Dubois leases this, pro this section of the property from? Basically, that's, that's how it works. Okay. It, the, the property for years has been divided up into, into sections so that there would never be a, a, if there was a problem with one end of, of, the, of the property, it would not affect the other business entities that, that were on the property. And this, has been, this has been going on before I even got involved. I've been around for 10 or 15 years. So I know that, you know, they've always, you know, you know treated each section of the, of, of, of the property business as something completely separate. Like composting isn't involved with the with the junkyard at all. There's no uh, there's no correlation. Is it on a different map than what? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm sorry. What's it said? Oh, we got there's, it's a conglomerate of, of half a dozen pieces of property. But I mean, do you want to know what's the third whether the lease describes this property as it here shows on this map? Mm -hmm. Does the lease between Randrick Trust and Mr. Dubois does it describe this property? Uh, it probably does. It probably refers to it as uh, just as as, as the junkyard property on on the way of the map it was. And if the lease describes that property, I mean, I don't. It's, it's almost like it's a separate piece of property. Somebody else has got rights to it beyond the actual owner. Um, just like you know, I thought I'd buy somebody's house if you rented it to them. And so um, I guess I don't see Mr. Dubois, the owner, as the lessee from Randrick, and Randrick's got issues with the town and on other sections of the property. I don't know whether that's is that the apple. Well, is that the appeal? Du Bois Livestock. The, the, that's the, another one. Well, Randrick Trust, while it owns all the property, when it uh, when it Acquired its uh, amended license, and so I was going to say we, we had to give them the, the trust had to give an easement to the uh, to the, the corporation so that we could not interfere with it at all. Okay, so so the, the way it's set up is the the trust, even though it owns a property, that one particular section, which we can't do anything on the property at all. And they insisted on that to get the license. Who's the who's the alleged violator? Of the Du Bois Livestock Inc. Okay, that's a separate corporation. Absolutely. Okay. Is that a one year permit or three year? One year. One year. Didn't we do it last year? Yeah. And Du Bois Livestock had issues last year and we did it. Um, we didn't, it's no notice of violation, I don't think, issue until this year. Well, we, 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 we had a You've had discussions, but no notice of violation at this year. Uh, yeah, well, we got one like two or three years ago, and we were we've been wrestling around with it for quite a while. You didn't get a notice of violation. Yeah, we did. It's all 2013, that's how the whole thing started. They, they need to renew their conditions. From, uh, from Jamaica. 
Right, but you didn't get a notice of violation that you recently got saying cease and desist your operation. Oh, none of that. We never got that. So we never got a cease and desist. That, right. that, that's why. But it was, right. right. No, we never got a cease and desist. Right. I don't see a problem as long as that lease describes the existing area where the automobile salvage yard is. When does the current permit expire? Like the one that's active now, is it, it, there must be an active permit for Marcel Dubois now. Does that expire at the end of the month or something? Or? I don't know. October, October. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All of these months. Yeah. Yeah. October, October. Yeah. So you have a written lease? You have a, a, lease, a lease that describes? Yeah, it, 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 you got it in the record somewhere. Okay. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'd like to have a copy of the lease attached to the approval. Oh, well, sure. Okay. I still have a motion and a second. Any more discussion on this? Dan? No. Uh, all those in favor of renewing our southern books? On the business. So before we give out, before we, before we give this out, if you could bring me the lease. Oh, I'll do that. They, they dropped off the application, but they didn't have the check for oh, the okay. payment because it was coming from the main yeah, office yeah. in Canada. So, so at that again, I would hold until we receive the application fees. Could we, uh, could we move AMI forward uh, so that it doesn't have to come back to the table subject to the funds being brought in? I yeah. think you could entertain a motion that way. Yeah. Yeah. I would make that a motion. Second. Can you repeat that, please? I was signing my name. We're going to make the motion is made for what now? To to approve AMI recycling permit subject uh, to the, subject to the, the funds being the delivered to town hall. If they don't deliver the funds, we revoke it. Okay. We're going to issue it. Well, they have, they have to have it October 1st, right? Which is. Um, I, I, it's approved. If you approve it, then it's a matter of them giving me the check, and once they right. check, I'll, I'll release it. But I won't release it until payment is received for it. Um, it's partly the fee and advertising costs is what they pay for. Right. Uh, maybe second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Now I'm moving to other business. Uh, yeah, I do have one thing. Let me sign my name. Uh, RSU 21 is instituting a strategic planning core planning team that um, is to work on and upgrade their strategic plan for guiding our students and our schools to a prosperous future. The first meeting is October 5th from 5 to 6.30 at KES in room uh, A102, which is their boardroom. Anyone would like to be there? I will be here. October what? October 5th. From 5 to 6.30. They're also looking for members to be involved in that strategic planning committee, right? They're looking for full-time members to be part of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm the one. You're the one? I'm the one. And My name is on the list. Hey, Bill Bill. <laughs> one other thing under other business, I think Heritage Day. Thank you, Diane. Diane directed traffic. Heritage Day. I think we had a great turnout. <laughs> we did have a great turnout. I think, uh, you know, it, everybody seemed to be very happy that was there, and you know, it's still coming together. You know, or you yeah, know, like, people from Italy. Oh, really? Yeah. I had a couple from Italy. They drove by. They saw it. They, this is. I go. Nope. Come on in. But they were visiting <coughs> from Italy, and they happened to be coming on. 
Come on in. Do we have people from Louisiana? Yeah. I, I think uh, the more, we, the the more we can promote it with other organizations in town to come join us. You know, maybe the PTA will leave. You yeah. know, Boy Scouts camped out overnight. Um, people thought it was wonderful. They did some bean hole beans, and everybody thought they were great. And, yeah, I didn't get any, so I can't tell you how great they were. They were all gone. You know, I, I think we did well. I I went to another fair recently. You know, just the other day, and. Uh, I mean, we had wagon rides going around that were free, and uh, everything pretty much other than the food and stuff and concessions was free, and uh, I think it's getting to be a really good family event, and it's a good promo for a rental, and I think hopefully if you can encourage anybody else to participate, either as vendors or, you know, um, any which way they can, and the weather almost, you know, we're always... Well, I think it's, definitely a, it's, nice. a, it's a great... Yeah. Uh, Didn't Dr. Trentaline, the dentist, get a new customer? Out of, out of that? <laughs> I don't know, I'm thinking somebody that was. Well, seasonal cottages was there too. Seasonal cottages was there. Yeah. So, but thank you. If, you know, if anybody that you know participated or came, you know, thank you very much for coming because it was great. Any other business? Well, I, I looked up and I see you all in direct control. Well, I, I went, did that, then we went down to the Orange Beach car show. And